Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the CNC with Dave show. This is our 20th episode. Man, I can't believe we've done 20 of these things already. But uh, don't have a whole lot going on tonight. I thought we'd maybe just take some some uh, hobby CNC questions and stuff like that. I do have a, a couple of uh, announcements that I want to uh, do real quick before we do the uh, panel introductions. Uh, not many of you probably know, but my good friend Mark Lindsay, his father passed away uh, Thursday night, and that's why he's not on here. He is in the chat room, I think, but um, he's unable to be uh, with us on the panel tonight. So uh, if you would, uh, keep Mark and his family in your, uh, in your thoughts. Uh, also, another thing, you know, like I said, this is the 20th show. And I've done, you know, we've done 20 in a row. I haven't had taken one off. So next Saturday, September 10th, there will not be a CNC with Dave show. Uh, we'll be back on the 17th. Um, I've got something I think is pretty exciting for the for the 17th. I almost was going to try to do it uh, tonight, but I didn't want to rush it and you know, kind of halfway do it. So uh, I'm going to do that the 17th. And if you want to find out what that is, you'll just have to come back and watch. So, uh, okay, well let's let's go with the uh, introductions here. We've got a small panel tonight. Uh, Juan, you want to start us off, buddy? Sure. Uh, my name is Juan Lopez. Uh, I live in Dallas, Texas, and uh, you can find me here on YouTube under G Code One Design. I'm also on Facebook and on Instagram. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for being on here, Juan. Appreciate you. Thanks for having uh, me. Next, uh, we got Melinda. Well, hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you pretty good. Okay, Melinda Davies. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under Melinda Davies. Uh, come look me up there. And thanks for having me, Dave. Oh, you're you're welcome, Melinda. Glad to have you on. Uh, and lastly, we've got my buddy out there in California, Rich. Yeah, Rich Moeller out here in California. You can find me mostly on uh, YouTube under Shade Tree CNC. I post a lot of my stuff on Facebook under the same name, and I'm on Instagram for the same name as well. Okay, very good. Well, thanks for being on here, Richard. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to, I don't know if any of you guys, uh, Juan or Richard or Melanie, any of y'all are watching YouTube, but... Uh, I've got it on over here, and I see we've got a question from Jim Senecola. I guess this question is directed at me. I'm not sure. He's, it says more build videos coming, um, and I got to tell you, Jim, I apologize because I, I know I haven't put a video out. Uh, you know, I'm doing the, the video series on the the, the Gatton CNC build, and I haven't had one out in about three or four weeks. And the reason I haven't is because I've been so busy cutting those kits, and I'm building the, you know, doing the build for the video right in the garage, right next to the the one that I'm using to cut the kits. So I can't shoot video while I've got that other big loud <laughs> router running. So I apologize. I'm gonna try to get uh, get another build video. I should. I'm almost done. I mean, I've I've actually done some stuff and posted pictures on Facebook. I've got most of the gantry done, and I I haven't really shot any video of it because I. I was kind of working on it while that other machine was running. Uh, so I'm about to the point where uh, I'm going to put the uh, the motors on it and everything. Get you know I got to cut the lead screws yet. I do have those here. I just haven't got around to doing it. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get some more build videos uh, coming. Uh, I see. <laughs> Rick Nolan is asking me about the weather. Any bad weather your way, Dave? No, it just it just missed me. I don't think we even got but just a little bit of sprinkle out of that deal. It it went just south and east of, of me, so didn't have any problem at all with that. Okay, let's see, we got another question here. What is the best way to fix the Z axis on the front? Z plate since there isn't a nice pocket. Uh, 
I'm assuming you're talking about that nice little pocket that I I put in there when I cut them. You, I, there should be dimensions on the drawing showing you uh, from the edge of the plate to the edge of the that little nut block, you know, and then from the side over to the edge. Put the so Z nut on the plate. The Z. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's talking about the Z when he says the Z nut. He's talking about the uh, that little block that that glue. I, I glue and screw mine to the to the plate. But uh, yeah, there's. I mean, you don't have to even put it in that spot. I just. It, I think I basically just got it centered on that plate, uh, up and down and left to right. So. But there should be in one of the drawings, if you go back and look at the drawings, there should be dimensions showing you uh, the location of that, even without, even if you got one without the uh, the little um, pocket. So, anybody else have any questions or? While we're waiting on some questions to pop up over here, I'm, I'll ask the the panel what you guys got any projects in the works here? Anything you're working on? Who, Richard, what you got? Well, we built ourselves a footstool. We got all the video in the can, but we just haven't had time to uh, put it all together. We've had a lot of uh, challenges this last week, being on vacation and all, and trying to get all caught up. Yeah. Okay, what about what about you, Melinda? You been working on anything in your shop? Well, the last thing I cut on the CNC were the baby cradles. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't posted a pic of those yet. They turned out really well. Um, I think I made four of them. Um, and I did that right before I went on vacation. I finished them when I got back. Um, yeah, they, turned, that, and they were cut on the CNC completely. They were awesome. Yeah, and the, the picture you, you texted me of, uh, what, what do you call him, Everett? Everett, yeah. Everett, he was, he was in that one <laughs> sitting on uh, Brandon's uh, workbench. <laughs> that yeah, was just, that was great. Yeah. So, what about what about you, Juan? You got any, uh, got that CNC cranking out anything? Uh, I've been working on some uh, signs here and there, but uh, ultimately I want to get it going on that cigar box guitar. But uh, that's what I'm looking forward to anyway. Yeah, and did you, uh, I think I saw on Facebook, you just recently got a, a planer, is that correct? I did. I went and purchased it yesterday. Okay. Well, actually a joiner. It's a joiner. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I haven't yeah, put it together or anything yet. It was, a, it was a, a Delta or something, wasn't it? Uh, I got the porter and cable. I, I kind of, it was an impulse buy. You know, the wife's like, well, let's go get it. So I was like, hey, you ain't telling me twice. Let's go get it. Yeah, so, yeah. If the wife, if the wife says let's go get it, you better not say anything. Just hop in the car and go. Right. But yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, let me go through here and make sure I'm not missing any questions. Thomas Grimm says, "Is the design parametric so that the thickness of the plywood?" is properly compensated for in the way the parts fit together. Wow. Uh, well, I use parametric modeling, you know, SolidWorks, but the when I model all that stuff up, I just modeled it up as three-quarter inch. The plywood that I'm using uh, is pretty close to three-quarter. It's a, it, measure, it mics about 730, 740, something like that, uh, pretty close. So... Uh, Okay, and he also says, or is the tolerance a problem? Don't work, don't don't get hung up on the thickness of the plywood. If you go get something and you're measuring it, and it's not, you know, three quarter. All that all that stuff will still line up. I mean, I don't really think of anything that you're going to have to uh, where there would be enough tolerance build up to uh, to where it would make a difference. You know, now of course if you get like you know, five ace plywood or something. Yeah, you know, then you're going to have some problems. But if you, as long as you buy three quarter plywood or uh, whatever it is in millimeter, what is that, 19 millimeter or 18 millimeter, whatever, um, you should be should be good. 
I did have a, another question while I'm waiting for some more to pop up over there in the chat. Uh, somebody, let's see if I can remember where I put it. Yeah, James Amos. He says, hey, Dave, on one of the recent Bill videos, and I, when, he, when he says recent, I guess he's talking three or four weeks ago because that's the last one I did. Uh, you mentioned using a second set of rails on the gantry. Are you doing that and why? And he says that I was, I guess when he was watching the video, I was pointing to the horizontal aluminum angle rails that run the V-Grew bearings. Thank you, James. Uh, yeah, James, it's basically when I did this, this the Gatton CNC, the new plywood one, you know, the, the Garage Works CNC, the 4 before has that dual rails, you know, front and back, and it's basically using that same concept. Uh, you know, that, that works out really good. And when you make, anytime you make something in a box, uh, you really get some good strength and rigidity. And if you watch any of the videos that I have, I won't say recently, but within the last couple of months where I'm showing that big green thing, the, the machine that I use to cut the kit parts, you know, that thing is so stout. I'm running a Porter Cable 7518, and that thing is a hoss. It's, it weighs just under 15 pounds. And, of course, you know, being big as it is, it sticks out farther, too. So, you know, I've got no flex. I mean, that thing is just solid as a rock. And, uh, you know, it would probably be okay if I just used the one rail, but that, you know, I, it's just the way I designed it. The Garage Work CNC worked so well that I thought, well, I'm just kind of going to kind of incorporate that same design into this new plywood uh, Gatton CNC. So that's... Uh, Yes, I see we, uh, P, I see PL Camp, I'm not sure who that is, but uh, he says, yeah, metal people get hung up on plus or minus a 30 second. Yeah, they get hung up on a lot less than that <laughs> sometimes, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark Lindsay says metal folks should chill out, yeah, yeah, remember I'm a metal guy too, <laughs> so but yeah, that some some guys just get hung up over the the tolerances and stuff. You can't you got to quit worrying about that kind of stuff, guys. And I and I mean, you know, when when you get when you start building your own CNC, whether you're building one of mine or you know your own design or whatever, get out there and have fun, man. That's what it's about. It, you can work out the bugs after you get the thing together. If it's not right, you know, it'll probably be good enough for you to cut out some more accurate parts with uh, with the CNC. So. That's that's the thing that always just kind of drives me crazy is when I get emails and and people are asking about tolerances and flex and you know I, I mean I I build these things in my garage I don't have an R and D department or something where we you know have all this fancy equipment to check the the flex of the gantry and all that stuff I mean you know it's like we always say what do we say it doesn't matter just get out there and have fun with it but. I know I'm having fun with mine. Yeah, yours, yours is. Uh... <laughs> How's it going, Russ? <laughs> How's the build coming along? Please share with us. Believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, who is that? Have you have you got any of the screws out of the crate yet? Not yet, but I'm closer now than I ever was. Yeah. Well, you did open the box, right, or the crates? Uh, no, oh. not yet, but I'm close. Okay. Now, you know, I think I think you should at least post some pictures of the crates on Facebook. <laughs> 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 this is what I that's, did, you know. I that's gonna be the closest thing we get to to seeing that machine. I said I'm making the table for that doggone thing, and I made my I put two wheel two legs on it with the wheels, and I cut them at 27 inches, so it'd be a 30 inch high table. And I uh, got those two on, and the next night I come in there and I I cut the the, the last two. And I got them on with the wheels, and I, I laid that table down on, on its legs, and it wobbled. And I got so aggravated. Why is it wobbling? And so I picked it up, and I measured them stinking legs, and the first two I cut at 27. The second two I cut at 26. And I <laughs> said, why in the world did I do that? 
Oh! Je well, just throw a shim on it. You'll be good. Well, then, then you know, you're the first one that told me the shim idea. <laughs> So you you should try to work in my garage. My garage has the most uneven floor you've you ever seen. seen I mean, there was for the you know this house that I live in was built in 1991, and they have a downspout, uh, you know, and they didn't direct the water somewhere else. So every time a good rain would come, the water would run, and it ran up under the the garage slab, and it yeah. it finally washed out enough that it, it sunk. So I've got, I mean, I'm talking a big difference. There's almost like five inches difference. Let and me, so let me everything know. I put in my garage, you know, I build everything pretty much on casters anyway. Mm -hmm. I have to get pieces of wood. Russ knows. He was here. He saw it. Uh, you know, you have to get everything and get it shimmed up where it's level. And then if you move it, you got to do it all again. So... The, well, you know, you, you're saying all this. I built my own shop out of wood, and, uh, you know, when I put my floor in, I used three-quarter inch decking treated. So it was, that stuff was, I mean, ultra heavy. And I neglected to put uh, bracing underneath the middle of the sheet because I said, that ain't going to never sink and swap, uh, you know, sag on me. It's too heavy. And by God, every one of them have. So I have to go back up underneath the shop and, and throw me some more landscape timbers and, and concrete blocks underneath there to shore it up so I can get it all level and stuff. But I can't move in that shop right now. There, there's only room for one person in that 8-foot uh, by but 20-foot long shop, and that's just me. I can't get yeah. nobody else in there. Yeah. And, I, and I, to, I, I need to explain to our viewers here because we've got uh, – I don't know, 50 something people watching here, and and just just so everybody's on the same page here, we get we give my good buddy Russ Meadows a hard time. Uh, he uh, he purchased a Garage Works uh, CNC four by four, a nice one too. Uh, uh, yeah, a nice one. On June, I'm I'm, I'm gonna rat you out here, Russ. On June third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I checked the UPS. I checked the UPS thing the other day. He got it at his house. On July, uh, no, I said June the third. I'm sorry, July third, and okay. then he got it ten days later on July thirteenth, and the thing's still in the crate. So we <laughs> we give old Russ a hard time about that. I am uh, as close now as I've ever been. You got himself the nice <laughs> four by four, the big model, and I still did. in the crate. Man. I have my the uh, the five by five plywood sheet ready to put on top of the table. I just got to. Cut them two legs, make them all level, and I can throw it on, and I can throw them crates up there. That's how close I am. I'm <laughs> okay. <close. laughs> I just want to say one thing. I have to admit that I think your floor in your garage, Dave, is the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I'm glad you it haven't drops seen literally from one corner up to the side where you go into his house, uh, at least three inches, maybe four. Yeah. yeah. It's it's ridiculous. The whole the slab cracked and it just kind of went like that. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, there's some places you you like I said, I put everything on casters where you roll it to a spot and you let go of it and it'll take off and go. So you you got to <laughs> lock the wheels and it's ridiculous. But fortunately, I mean, it didn't hurt the foundation of the house because uh, I had a, a building inspector inspect it and he you know he pointed that out to me and and says, man, that's that's bad. And he says, but he goes, well, he goes, it's probably settled all it's going to. So, uh, Yeah, I think you just need to pour some concrete over the top of the floor that you have and level it all out. Yeah, yeah, but I'd have to pull all that stuff out. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll ever hey, happen. I'll, I'll probably just keep shimming stuff. I, I, I would say I just keep putting blue tarps on my roof, but it's going to have a new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either that or start growing trees in the living room. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. You get any pictures of that from the outside? I hadn't thought about it. I mean, well, I need, need to post a couple. Yeah, I might. I might do that. I just. Well, right now I can't post anything of the roof because I look like a FEMA home. It's all blue tarps. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You got rained on really bad, right? 
Uh, rain was the not even the. I wished it was just rain. It was a lot of wind. I have got a couple of trees down in my yard. Crazy. Couple in the attic too, huh? Yeah, one of them. Uh, yeah, decided to put a limb through the roof in the dining room. Ooh, came down on your house. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so we've got them. Could, probably could have been a lot worse, though, Russ. From oh the, yeah, I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, I look at people over in the Clearwater, St. Petersburg, uh, which is the Pinellas and Pasco County area in Florida, and they have homes that are underwater. I'm talking about literally uh, four, five foot, six foot of water in their homes. Man. All the flooding. So, yeah, I'll take my hole in the roof any day of the week, trust me. So it's just uh, it's just a little uh, pimple on the end of my nose, so to speak. It's irritating, but I can get over it. Jim Bashir's in the chat room wants to know what you're going to make out of the trees. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, they're oak, they're just old oak trees, uh, and so I'll I'm, I'm not gonna yeah I'll make some stuff out of them, but most of it's gonna go just be cut up and thrown away. Anything I can get, you know, pretty good size, 10, 12 inches, maybe 14 inches out of them, I'll keep and try to make some stuff out of them. But all the other small stuff, they weren't. That's another fortunate thing. They weren't real big, so that I had to worry about huge eight or ten or fifteen inch limbs coming down. The one that came through the roof was only about six or eight inches. By, by the way, Russ, I just if you, you see me look over that way, Alabama just scored a touchdown, so I got the I got the game on. So. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the other one that was really upsetting <laughs> is is one of them laid over just as gently. And it was just a, uh, a very small tree, only about 12 foot high or whatever, and not very big at all. But it blew it over just as, laid it over just as gently over my wife's 2014 uh, Camar no. black Camaro with a uh, black Camaro convertible. Oh, man. But it did not hurt it at all. It just laid, it just kind of like, as if you would take your hand and just push it over and it just laid up against the car. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, it was good. It turned out good. Or, it, I mean, it wasn't bad. Because that same place, this tree that's only uh, 8 or 10 or 12 foot high, uh, it's a lot of like, I don't remember the name of it, but it has these beautiful yellow flowers all over it. That same tree or that same place that that tree's planted had about a 30, I'm going to say at least a 30 foot oak tree back in 2004 and when one of the hurricanes came through uh, which tore that oak tree down and this I, matter of fact my, I'm almost like I don't want to plant a tree there anymore because that same tr place that had that 30-foot oak came down in 2004 with the hurricanes and it actually come across my wife's she had a armada a Nissan armada and it come across her fender her hood and crushed her windshield in that car I, 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 see, I, I see Russ Meadows bugged out on us here or he disappeared. We didn't shame him into going out to the shop and start working on that thing, did we? Nah, he said he'd be right back. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that, that, same on place, the chat. that same place had a tree that uh, went across to her motto and cost uh, about five, $6,000 worth of damage to her car. So, And then I put this tree up, but this tree will never get any really bigger than what it is, but it gently laid it up against because that's the first thing she said. She goes, oh, my God, and we looked out the window, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's laying on your car, but it didn't hurt it. Yeah, I, I got another question here uh, in the chat. Paul Lawrence says, Dave, are you still using the UC CNC software, or have you gone back to Mach 3? The UC CNC software is still on that laptop, the, the one I'm looking at right here. But I have not used it uh, at all since then. I'm still using the UC100, uh, you know, the little controller thing. But I'm using it with Mach 3. I just, uh, I don't know. I guess when you get old, you just don't like change. And I didn't, I didn't like the... Uh, you know, as I mentioned on that one show, I didn't like the colors. Uh, there was a few things about the the screen layout I liked, but but I didn't like the little pastel colors and all that. I just, the, to me, the Mach 3 screen is 
just easier to read, and that's what uh, you know. That's what I've been using for like ten years. So uh, that's that's what I've been running out there when I use when I cut those kits. Although you know, I got I paid for the software, so I still got it, but uh, I don't know if I'll use it. I may I, I may use it some when I get this other build done. Uh, that's kind of what I got it for, but. Uh, Let's see, we got another question here. Hey Dave, did you get my email about a week ago? I asked about the material depth the Z axis would support and sent you some pics of my CNC work. And that is Todd, looks like Todd something 1962 or something like that. Um, I probably did get the email. I don't get a chance to answer a lot of them because I get a ton of them every day. Um, if you're asking about the depth of the Z, I'm assuming you're talking about the Gatton CNC, the, the new plywood thing. Um, I think there is, um, I, I'm pretty sure there's like, if you measure from the table to the underneath side of the gantry, that bottom rail, I think there's like eight inches, and of course the Z plate hangs down a little more than that. So I know you've got a good six inches of, of clearance there. I think. I don't know if that answers your question or not. But I know, yeah, it, w it was designed to have about six inches. Of course, again, it depends on how how high you're stacking stuff up on your table too. You're gonna lose some of that. Okay, yeah, he was talking about the GAT and CNC. Yeah, you you should have at least um, six inches there. It also depends on what uh, length of bit you're gonna use. Yeah, that's true too. And see, in my case, I, like I said, I'm using that big old monster router too, so I lose a little bit uh, of the. I lose a little bit everywhere. I lose a little bit on the Z and and also on the. Uh, on the Y because that thing sticks out so far because it's so big, so much bigger than the other ones. All right, you guys are quiet over there in chat tonight. I don't see a whole lot of questions. Got, uh, oh, I got something I wanted to show you all tonight. Uh, I'll be right back. I got to go, uh, go and get it. Okay. You got a DXF question on. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. We need to explain it. We don't do drawings anymore. Yeah, we got a question over here. It says, hey, Dave, I've been trying to get a hold of you through email. I purchased the latest set of drawings for the CNC. Do you have them in DXF? No, I do not. Um, there's no reason to have the DXF now because I'm only selling the uh, kits that come with the necessary drawings to be able to assemble it. Jim Bashirs, he says, anyone take, anyone ever take a Shape Oco or X Carb? And make it larger. Izzy Swan did that. Yeah, he's he's the only one I know of. I think that. Yeah, he, he made, made it like eight feet long or something like that. Yeah, but but then he didn't keep it long. I don't it, think it. I, I don't think it worked out for him too good. It but, was uh, it was his first machine, and he gave it away to a local uh, maker maker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, Jim, uh, is, yeah, other than Izzy Swan, I don't know of anybody that's, that's taken one and made it larger. However, I do know a couple of people who have, well, I really know more than that, but a couple uh, that have taken an x carve and done some major, and I do mean major, modifications to make it a much better machine. 
Have you seen and the latest X Carve uh, commercial? They took all of those things and added it to their new machine. They have a limited supply of the old X cars they're trying to, to sell off. They've actually made a stiffer gantry, different bearing system. Yeah, but they're, I mean, they're still using the, the same little dinky belt, so aren't they? They are. Yeah. Yep. So. Anything belt drive, you're, you're not going to be able to really plow deep and go fast. I think they yeah. just added some ribbons to the belt or something like that, I'm, I imagine, so they won't slip. And that's to the ends. Yeah. They changed the pulley, too, or something like that. I mean, it does look a little more rigid. Well, they beefed up the gantry. They made it thicker and have a stiffener in it. Yeah, I, I, I watched that little, uh, I don't know, promotional video or whatever it was. And it didn't, I mean, it didn't look like they changed that much. I mean, they, they beefed up the frame a little bit and stuff like that, and they've got that nice uh, control box, which looks very nice. But uh, it looks like it's still the same old belt drive and stuff like that, so I don't know. I got, I got a question here. Jeff Robinson says, if I buy the Gatton CNC, do I need to buy the drawing? No, you don't have to buy the drawing. If you, I'm, you know, I'm assuming you're talking about the Gatton parts kit, you know, this is a DIY parts kit, uh, but the the drawings are included with that, so. Yeah, I'm reading this, they're talking about the, still some talk about the x car. they beefed up the x-axis, and I don't know, they, they had plenty to work on, for sure. They went to a wider belt, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, I you know, I told you guys I've I've got an X car that I took in on trade, and I'm planning on using it with that laser. And uh, again, I've been so busy I haven't had time to really fool with it. But I I did have it set up right here in the living room at one time, and was playing around, you know, just kind of cutting air with it, and uh, it it runs fine. I mean, the belts work fine as long as it's not trying to cut anything. So I figured it'd be perfect for. Uh, the laser, so I'm going to check out that that laser I've got and uh, knock the dust off of it and put it. I'll probably end up putting it back out there in my shop, out back somewhere. Are you going to go ahead and, and uh, get you a uh, more powerful laser, or are you just going to keep the one you have? Well, if that the that guy finally sent me a, another one, you know that one I had quit after like five hours, and uh, he did. He did send me another one, just the the laser part, and I haven't even hooked it up to see if it works. I don't know. And if the the box it came in, man, it looked like it had been run over by a truck. So I really don't have a whole lot of confidence about this one working either. But um, hey, Dave, you might want to mention uh, what is it the uh, Sidewinder CNC or C? Uh, what's the address to where you can go to get the kit? Yeah, I see John Langford's asking, how can I buy your kit? John, you go to my website, and I think there's a, in fact, there's a, a link in the description of this video. It'll, it'll take you right to it. But, uh, yeah, you just go to www.cncsidewinder.com, and uh, there's a, a page at the top that, that, Tells you where to go to uh, to buy the kit. There's another question here. Let's see, Dave. I see that Xylotex has taken their power supply slash controller off the list. Are they just out of stock? I don't know. I have I have not looked. Let me uh, let me go take a quick look right at their website right quick. And also, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before on, on the show. If I haven't, um, I wish I had, but uh, I think I have mentioned it. But for, uh, for a lot of these guys, and again, whether you're you know, trying to put together one of my kits or building your own or whatever, uh, there is a really good forum that over there on the Xylotex thing as far as 
you know, Mach 3 questions and questions about the stepper motors and all that stuff. Uh, he has a, has a really good forum. I thought I had that bookmark, but I don't. Let's see here. No, he's, I don't know what, who, who was asking that question. If you go look at drive, you go to the Xylotex site and click on drive boxes, he still has that listed, the one that I use. So who was that that, that said that? PL camp or PI camp, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, yeah. The Bobs are off the list too. I think those breakout boards you actually have to look for them really well. I don't, I don't know what where he yeah. has them, but now, yeah, the okay, breakout it's, board it's, is off the list, but not the drive, not the drive. Yeah, are you are you looking, Richard? Do you see the drive box? Uh, I am not looking, but I can okay. Look. Well, I'm no, that's okay if you're not. I just, I mean, I just went to it, and right there it is. So. It's under dry box. Now, under the power supply, I mean, he's got one in there. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I guess I'm not sure what the guy was looking for. Mark Lindsay says he's out of, he's out of the breakout boards. Okay. At least yeah. that's what he's saying on the chat. Yeah. And, you know, and, and like any business, the guy will run out of stuff once in a while, but, uh, it, it probably won't be long before he's got them. But, but the, the drive box, the, the one I recommend with the kit and the ones I use, you know, with the garage work CNC and all that is listed on there. So, Dave, the reason he's running out is because you're selling too many kits, so you need to cut back because he's running out of stuff to supply that could, kits. That could very well be, Russ. That, that could be. <laughs> cut back on your kits. Don't sell so many, and then he'll be able to keep up with it. Okay, PL PL Camp says yes, I see them. So I guess he's he's got them now. Hey, I got something I want to show. Okay. okay, we're gonna do a Russell Clarity show and tell right quick. Yep. Here we go. Pretty cool. Is that what the PC stands for? Pretty cool. Yep. Pretty cool. A pretty cool. Twelve fifty. Uh, okay. No. Um, my good buddy, where is Mark Lindsay, by the way? Why ain't he on here tonight? Oh, you you were late getting on here, Russ. He's uh, on the chat. Yeah, he's on he's on the chat. Mark, uh, his his father passed away Thursday. Oh, night, I'm, so, I'm sorry. So he's out of town, and and I guess he's not set up to to be on the show here. But but he All is right. in the chat watching. Well, so God bless you, uh, Mark. Uh, my thoughts and prayers with you and your family. Uh, I know how that is, so yeah. But anyway, he hooked me up with this. Uh, it's called Elair Corporation, E L A I R E Corporation, and for about with shipping about uh, I think it was about thirty bucks. I got oh, this new collet. Yeah, I got a new collet for my six ninety uh, porta cable. I believe it is. Nice. Yeah. Is that a one eight? Yeah, it will hold a one eight. So all these little tiny drill bits that I've had for so long yeah, yeah. will now be able to work in my uh, six ninety. Now that being said, they're they're I'm not gonna bad mouth them as a bad company, but I will tell you something that I learned about them. And I just want to pass that on before you. I will put the link because I think they are noteworthy. This is a, a custom-made collet, by the way. This is not something you can just uh, achieve by going out there. They, they custom-make this collet, and I'm very impressed with it. I haven't had a chance to use it, but uh, I'm very impressed with the way it looks. <laughs> but my point being said is once you order it from them, being the fact this thing is custom made, don't plan on it being there overnight. I know most most of us is planning on uh, when you order it like from Amazon in two days it'll be there. Now uh, this took me almost a little, I think four or five weeks to get here. So I was a little disappointed in that, 
and I called them up and I let them know that that I was disappointed about that time but then I learned that they manufacture these things in-house uh, so but my point was to them was I said okay I understand that why don't you put that on your website so that when people order these things they will have an idea hey all of our stuff is custom made so it may take a little time before it gets there because you know and today's thing, I mean, and all y'all can understand that too. When you order something pretty well, within a week you've got it. I mean, and yeah, even a we're week. All, we're all used to that uh, instant Amazon. gratification, you know, with Amazon Prime, you, you order it, and before you can turn your computer off, it's on your porch, pretty much. So. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. and I wasn't up. I wasn't upset with it took so long. Had they note notified me in the beginning that that's what it was going to be. I would have said, oh, okay, no problem, because I called them out and ringed them out, and I was like, he goes, whoa, I don't guess you understand. I said, okay, explain to me, and he explained, and I said, okay, that's fine, but put it on your website to tell people so when they make an order that they're not expecting it to be there in two or three days. So, yeah, but yeah, Russ, that, that, that company, we got a question here in the chat. It says, do they make a call it for a DeWalt 611? I'm assuming they do. Probably make them for all kinds they of stuff. They make them for a wide varieties, and I will make sure that uh, Dave, uh, Mark Lindsay is the one that gave me the company's name. Yeah, he just he just put it there in the chat. Elair e Corporation. Yep, that's them. He's the yeah. one that turned me on to them, in other words. Thank you, Mark, for turning me on, by the way. Uh, he's the one that... Uh, Go, Mark. To, uh, to, uh, told me about them and I ordered this. And I'm very happy with it. I mean, it's a solid. It looks exactly like the collets uh, with the snap ring and everything from the Porter cable. Um, so yeah, I'm very yeah, that's nice, nice, nice looking collet. Yeah, I need, I need to get one for, yeah. for one eight. But it will allow me to use some of these really, really tiny bits that I've been dying to try to use, like that one, for instance. Yeah. I saw you hold something up that had Dremel on it. That's what Dremel stuff is, isn't it? All one eight. Yeah, this is all it uh, is. Dremel. But this one right here, I mic'd it, and it is less than one thirty second. Yeah. So I'm interested in uh, I just want to play around with them just to see what they're gonna yeah. do. Like this is a this is a Dremel one eighth inch ball. Uh. Which I have one eighth inch ball on a couple of them for with a quarter inch shaft, but I was just I just wanted to see what some of these will do and and this one is a brand new one that I had uh, that I haven't even used yet, still in the package. I'm just kind of yeah. just, just want to play around, but at least having the uh, eighth inch collet opens up a uh, a little different avenue, so to speak, that you can uh, use some Dremel bits and stuff with it. Yeah, I got I got some other questions I need to get to here, and also I noticed uh, PL. There's some people talking about some other companies as well as the layer for call. It's one guy uh, PL Camp says try Galaxy products. I'm not familiar with them, and then Ronald Ledger I think says oh, Precise right. Bits makes collets from one eight to half for mini routers. So there's a couple of other choices there. Uh, but I have heard a lot of good things about that Elair. Well, um, of the ones that I looked at, and I think those were some of the ones that Mark also told me about, Elair was the cheapest. That thing with shipping was less than thirty bucks. Yeah. Okay. I got I got a question I got to get to here. I, I already told the guy I'd get to it, and, he's, and it's scrolled way up there now. So, um, Mark Allen was. Let me see if I can find the question again because it's. See where it was. Yeah, here it is. He says, "I don't know what you're. Spe oh, I don't know what you're speaking about today. But while cutting, my machine just stopped. I have my new drive box on it, and it worked again after I reset Mach 3. Anybody have this happen? Yes, I have, and I have. I've had it happen a lot more frequently." And, you know, just, you know, and I thought, well, great, you know, here I get on the show and I brag about that UC100 and, <laughs> and now, but I think, I think I've got it figured out. Uh, a lot of times I use my laptop. In fact, I use, most of the time I use the very laptop that I'm on right now doing the show. 
uh, and I use that to, to run that big green machine out there. And I think part of the problem is it's me because I go out there and I forget to turn off the Wi-Fi. And every time I forget to turn off the Wi-Fi, it's trying to update something or, you know, I'm getting, you know, and like I'll start the machine and it'll run and maybe cut the first part or two. And then all of a sudden, you know, and, I, and like I said, I don't stand and watch mine. I'm over doing something else. And I think, wait a minute, it just sounds like it's just sitting there running. I look and it stopped and the reset button will be flashing. And so I haven't really been there to actually see it. I don't know if I would be able to know what making it stop anyway, but I think it has to do with the Wi-Fi because I know somebody else uh, emailed me and asked me that same kind of thing. And I, I said, well, you know, have you got your Wi-Fi turned off? And he said, no. And he went, turned it off and then he emailed me back later and, and or put something on Facebook or whatever and said, yeah, that, that seemed to, to do it. So, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really hurt anything as far, you know, cause it just, it's just like somebody hit the button or whatever. And so I just, I, I don't know about you, Mark, but I'm able to start it right back up, you know, cause while it's sitting there, I'll, uh, you know, reset the, you know, hit the reset button to clear it out. And then I just hit that set next line and run from here and then go again. You know, it's just kind of a pain in the butt because it stops, but I don't really lose anything. I don't have to go back to the start or anything like that. It's just kind of a pain. Uh, another thing that I don't know whether it might be part of the problem uh, is, you know, we've had some days here where it's been really, really hot. And I don't know whether my power may have flickered just enough to trigger that reset switch or not, but um, you know, I have had it do it on a few days when it's just got awful hot out there. Um, but then I then I thought, well, I'm going to start turning the the Wi-Fi off, and I I did notice that if I take the laptop out there and turn it on and get it all fired up, and then I go do some other stuff before I actually start the machine, the the computer the, the laptop has had time to get the updates and everything and do all that so I don't have the problem but it's only when I take the laptop out there forget to turn the Wi-Fi off and fire up the machine right away it'll run a little bit and then it stops every and, program uh, on your computer is going to try and download updates in the background yeah yeah so and turning think, off your Wi-Fi turns all of those off yeah yeah well, and, it, and I've had good luck once I turn the once I turn the Wi-Fi off uh, but it yeah, also it also goes beyond that. Make sure that your screen. You, I mean, if you have a screen saver or you have your battery that it sh goes to sleep after so many minutes. There's a lot of things that you need to check to make sure that that computer is going to be on. Because if you're on a battery power, for instance, uh, they automatically, unless you adjust the uh, settings on a laptop. It automatically will trigger off after so many minutes. Isn't there a power saving feature also you need to yeah. maintain always power yeah. max or something like that? Yeah, yeah I always I always had, I adjusted mine and set it up to you know, there's a choice you get that says never don't ever do that. That's what I got mine on. Yeah. And I also when I take it I don't ever take the laptop out there without dragging the charging cord or power cord or whatever you call it and I go ahead and hook it up because I know even though my laptop may be fully charged if I get running I'll forget about it and the next thing you know it'll go down like you said it'll try to try to stop or go to sleep or whatever it does when it when it goes in that power saving mode so uh, I always make sure I have it have it plugged in and and you know even though it may be already have a full charge that way I don't forget because like like I say, when I'm out there running, I'm running a long time. So, well, yeah, I noticed Mark said that he said he's on a desktop computer, but even desktop computers have screen savers, and they also have power management, mm -hmm. and they also have sleep modes. That if you're not moving your or uh, touching the keys, or you're not moving your mouse after so many minutes, they're designed to go into a sleep mode or whatever. So.
you need to check and make sure all those, not only the Wi-Fi, are are set to the max so it won't go to sleep. It won't do all those other things before you uh, try running that uh, running yeah. or a long program, so to speak. Right. I had one of my uh, programmers at work write me a little program, and what it does is it moves the mouse one pixel every 50 seconds, and then it comes back and it moves it back one pixel every 50 seconds. That's pretty cool. So that the yeah. screen never goes to sleep. Now, now, Mark, he, he's talking over here in the chat. He says he's he's got a uh, an old desktop. Tell Mark, if you can, type in the chat there and tell us a little bit about your computer. What kind of operating system are you using? And are you using a, since it's an, you said it's an old desktop, are you using a... Uh, just the parallel port connection, or do you have to use a, a UC100 or something like that? And that's the thing about computers, too, is that some will get fixed with, let's say, the screensaver, and some will get fixed with something else. You never know what particular thing that computer is tripping about. And that's because not everybody has the same motherboard, not everybody has the same graphics card, not everybody has the same any of that. And that all plays a factor when it comes to computers. Yeah, yeah, you're ex absolutely correct. Um, yeah, we'll we'll give Mark Allen a minute here and see if he posts something back on there. I'm I'm interested to know whether he's running a parallel uh, port connection too. I know another thing you got to be careful of is, uh, you know, I see somebody Sean Mason says double check all your cables when you're running just that parallel port thing. It's uh, it's it's easy to for that thing to come loose if you don't have the the little screw things on it, and I, and they don't on the back of the Xylotex box. You just push it on there. So if you've bumped your cable or kind of tugged on it a little bit, if you pull that thing out a little bit, it, it's going to stop. It's called black electrical tape. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's answered back. He says it's an XP system with a parallel port. What happened? was it was cutting then all of a sudden movement stopped well it's going to be hard to yeah to troubleshoot that without uh, you know i use out in my shop on the, my old sidewinder machine i've got an old uh i think that thing's an e-machine or something like that it's got oh. windows uh yeah it's got windows xp on it and it you know and it runs just off the parallel port uh, and I've even had I've even had times when I get doing a long run and I look up and I see the screensaver running, but it never for some reason the screensaver on mine never seems to make it screw up. It just you know or stop or anything. It just I don't I don't like for it to pop up. And I, and I try to remember to turn it off and occasionally I forget. But uh, I know I've never been a fan of screensavers on any computer. I just Keep them. I cut them all off. Cut anything off that don't need to be run. If I want that sucker to stay on for 24 hours, it's going to stay on for 24 hours. <laughs> hey. Mark uh, Mark Graves from Mark Custom Design says the only time I had a Z issue was when the bit was not tight enough and it dropped. <laughs> yeah. that, that can make for a bad day, Mark. <laughs> I like that emoji you put on there too. That's kind of what I'm worried about. This little collet, about how tight, how tight it's going to hold those little one eighth inch bits. It'll tighten up. I hope so. I'm. Yeah, I, it, it looks like a really nice collet too. It, I mean, it's it's it's. Let's put it this way: of uh, the collets that I have, of course, it's got to have more mass because it's one eighth in the center. But it's it's really heavy. So. Yeah. And, okay, Mark Allen saying again. He says he went out of Mach three and went back in, and it worked fine. And I've had I've had that happen too, where it's it's kind of like something else makes Mach three hang up, and you and it, you can't get anything to move. You know, even though you hit the reset button or what, it's like it just it just doesn't work. That happened to me a couple. Too. That happened to me a couple of times too, Dave. And I tried looking into that, and some people, I think it was a Mach three form. They were saying that even a change in voltage or uh, anything like that would make make it uh, act up. 
and do that. Just freeze. Because I've had it happen to me, but I'll just shut it off, turn it back on, and I'm back up and running. But uh, I've heard that. I'm not sure that's something they can look into. But Mach 3 Forum has that same problem listed on their forums, too. Yeah. I see Jeff Robinson. Uh, he asked a question. I, he says, will machine 3, I think he means Mach 3, run under Linux? And there is uh, Mach 3 is Windows only, but um, there is a Linux. Uh, Linux CNC? A whole a Linux deal you can use. Um, Marlo Swid, Swid, I can't say his name. Swidinski, Swidinski or whatever his name is. Like that, yeah. I can't ever say his name. You know, people should have names like Smith or Jones or something. Anyway, <laughs> he uh, he's a Linux user. Uh, where'd that guy go? Jeff? Yeah, Jeff Robinson. Uh, if you get on Facebook and go to the uh, Gatton Router Builders Group, I think is what it's called. Uh, ask Marlo, um, and he can tell you all about the Linux stuff. And there's a, and he's not the only one. There's a, there's a few there's, others there's over there. There's about four or five other ones, yeah. Yeah, there's a handful of guys that use Linux, but but Mach three is probably the uh, the number one stuff I would guess as far as obvious. Of course, I say that because I use it. And, but I think it. Uh... Can I have another show and tell? Oh yeah, we, uh, we, we yeah. I'll interrupt you again when the questions pop up. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> okay. We're out of time here anyway. We you know we we ought to try to end the show on time for once. That'd be. Well, I'm not, I mean nobody else is bringing anything up. So anyway, I built a. Hey Teresa. Hey Teresa. <laughs> I saw hey, right there. Hey, hey Teresa, I, I love your shirts. Tell her to come over and look. Russ. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe one day Russ will get his machine put together and I'll get a garage works shirt. Yeah. She she probably doesn't have any idea what the logo looks like since the machine's still in the crate. All right. So it's, it's, Anyway, so um, when I got my CNC home, I put it on some sawhorses and um, built the uh, enclosure around. It was, it was. I almost did it like bass backwards, uh, as far as the way I did it, because I put it on some sawhorses, run some two by sixes across it, and I built the enclosure around it while it was sitting on the sawhorses. Then I decided, hey, I'm going to build a table to go up underneath it. So I did that. So I built my table with some um, with a platform, and I have a video on that, by the way, on my YouTube channel. If you want to go out and watch it, but I built that table. Plug. Yeah, yeah, shameless plug. Simply Wooden Creations uh, CNC Table Build One and Two. Anyway, so anyway, to say that. No advertising, Dave. I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make my Inside drawers. Joke, by the way. I wanted to make the drawers kind of special, you know, on the front of it or whatever. So here's what I have. These are my drawers and my drawer fronts that I actually carved on my Garage Works CNC. So I made them. Oh, I, yeah. I just I saw that those things sitting back here. I didn't realize that was your drawers. This is actually the drawers. Yeah. Yeah. See. Those those turned out great. That, so that's a simply. Yeah, I, I'll give you a shameless plug too, Russ. Everybody, you need to go over there and check out the uh, Russ's video on on making those. Is that a shade? Got a really of nice setup. The inside of those drawers a shade of pink. No, it's actually a, a brown color. I don't. I guess we'll put the <laughs> lights in here, but it's actually a brown. It's a light brown, but it's a brown. It's not pink. Uh, I painted. Well, to say that, I painted them. See if that's better. Does that look pink? Yes. It does. It does have a pink tint. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Hey, maybe that's just your feminine side. We don't care. I guess, but it's it's, <laughs> it's normally brown. But I left the outside of them natural, 
because I waxed them with some men wax because I used wooden. If you'll go back and look at the video, I used wooden runners. I didn't go for no frills and buy no, you know, ten dollar a piece uh, to get the drawers in and out. I just sanded these down with uh, up to 320 sandpaper all the way around, and then I would just put men wax on them, and they slide. I mean, literally, they slide in and out as any other drawer would with a uh, high dollar runners. And I created all. I was. I went for I went for like three weeks trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to put on the front of these. Um, so yeah. I finally decided to go with the. Uh, I finally decided to go with the uh, simply wooden creations, and that's how they lie on the drawer. And it's making art from wood, established 1980. Yeah. Well, I gotta say those really look awesome. And and just could you tell our viewers one more time what what kind of machine you made those on? It was a garage work CNC. I don't remember where I bought it from, but some guy told me that they were really good. And if I came to it, uh, to where was it? Uh, it wasn't Macon, Georgia, but it was. If I come to Georgia, uh, they would uh, treat me really nice and teach me how to use it. How do and I get a hold of one of those, Russ? I don't. I, I don't remember where you can find him. Uh, Is I, there a but, website we can go to? I think so. It's Garage Work CNC. I believe that's the name of the website. <laughs> I tell you what, Russ. I think I think you kind of started something because you know. I I don't know. You may not have been the first one, but you were one of the first, I think, to put a uh, full size router on that. And now I get questions all the time about, you know, can I put a, you know bigger router on this and that? And I'm like. Yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> Russ has got one on his, and I know Juan's about to have a bigger one on his. So, what is that? Uh, the 690, I believe it is, for the cable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever, and I've put it through some trials uh, to see if uh, about the accuracy as far as cutting. Uh, it's on the money, and it. Well, that, I, I think the proof of that's sitting right behind you there. Yeah. Right. And you know this is the first we've been talking about. You know I preached on how to start outside on the left hand side or whatever. Uh, yeah. And and I'll go back to my buddy, uh, my buddy uh, Russ Meadows. He cut his stuff wrong. I measure these drawers or fronts three times, and they're sixteen and a half inches. Right? I knew that they're sixteen and a half inches. I went up and picked out at the Home Depot. This is nothing but just old plain old pine, people. It's and I, what I do is buy a 12-foot piece and I'll cut the knots out of it and take the clear sections to make stuff I want. Uh, this, uh, oh, I bought this piece or I had the piece and I cut all three doors and I knew they had to be 16 and a half inches, just like uh, Russ said they had to be 27. He cut two of them 20. And you know what? By God, I cut all three drawers front of, out of that piece of wood, 16 inches, knowing that they had to be 16 and a half. So I had them all set up. I put them into the get them ready to put them into the CNC to cut them. And I had it marked out where they're supposed to be. And I went like, Wow, these don't look right. They're not shaping up. I mean, I thought they were. And I went back and pulled my tape measure. All three of them were cut 16 inches. So. Guess what I did? Back to Home Depot, buy some more wood. Well, at least you were consistent. You got them all wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Russ Meadows got half of his wrong and half of them right. At least I got all of them wrong. <laughs> but anyway, but I that's just plain old pine uh, sh uh, with um, uh, colonial oak, I think it was, or light oak or whatever. With a stain, and then I went back and hand painted all the lettering in with black, and then made up these little. They're not very. I mean, they're. I made my own little knob right here, but they look good. Yeah, I like. I like the way they look. Hey, hey, Russ. Um, I mentioned at the top of the show here. I think probably before you got on here, that I wasn't going to have a show this next Saturday. Uh, you know, going to going to take a Saturday night off, but I think it'd probably be a good time now for you to talk about what you got going on next Saturday. 
Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that very much. Um, sure, I'll uh, talk about myself. Um, when I say that, I'll... Next Saturday, over at Simply Wooden Creations on YouTube, the Let's Talk Shop with Russ show will be its one year of having the show. And it should be, if I calculate it out right, the 50th show on September 10th. And we're going to have a couple of special guests going to be on that night. I hope to be able to give away some prizes, some tools. Uh, I'm really working hard for that. And the only reason I say that is because I hope to be able to is because there's some things in the making and the works that's going to be announced that night that might hinder or prohibit what I can give away because I actually in October I have another contest that's coming out but all that being said Izzy Swan is going to be on the show that night as a special guest and I think we all know who Izzy Swan is and also Lainey Shaughnessy is going to be a special guest and we're going to talk about uh, Lainey Shaughnessy has some special announcements and we're going to talk about the uh, Whirly Gig Wars if you've ever heard of that uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, brought up that night and a special announcement about that. So I'd appreciate y'all very much, all of y'all that could attend, because it's really something exciting for me. 50 shows one year, yeah. Uh, I, I actually didn't believe it was happening that quick. And also the announcement with Lainey Shaughnessy even just blows me away that I would ever... I imagine that was going to happen to my show and my uh, YouTube channel. So, be there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's probably where I'm going to be next Saturday for sure. <laughs> uh, Russ, we had a question from Melinda Davies over in the uh, Hangout chat stuff. She says, ask him what bit he used to cut the drawers doesn't look like a V bit. You use just a flat bit, right? Like a an one sixteenth. Yes, a one sixteenth, just a end mill. Now, now, did you use that even when you're doing the? I see that one drawer where on that other side of you, where it says creations. You know, because it's pretty. Looks pretty wide. Did you use a bigger one for that or no? Nope. One sixteenth all the way through. Okay. Just let it cut. I, it took a little bit longer naturally because this is bigger, but I just decided to go through. Because if you'll notice, this has very uh, tight corners. Yeah. So I didn't want to do a, a change, so I figured I'd just let it carve it all out. If it took even longer, so be it. It was a 1 uh flat end mill that cut all three. What was your step over on that? Heck, I don't remember. 50% or? No, it was less than that. I know it was less than 50%. I would say more like about 20%. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, it wasn't 50, it was cl probably closer to 20%. I wasn't too worried, and I, and I know what you're saying is about the step over and make it cleaner cut in here. I wasn't too worried about this. That's the reason I set it down to like 20% because I knew I was going to come in here paint it and they they turned out you know perfect for what uh what I wanted if I was going to sell it to a customer so to speak I probably would have bumped it on up a little bit more uh, but they, they turned out great yeah those look really good really good uh, I don't see <laughs> Okay, I guess. I uh, thought we had some questions over there, but I guess not. Uh, well, I guess we can officially end the show. We're at, we're over now, so we're over our time limit. So, yeah, our our record of running long is still intact. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, one other thing too. Uh, you know, unless somebody else got a question or something they want to talk about. Uh, we've get, still got about 60 folks watching. Uh, I, I'm I'm trying to schedule some future shows. Um, you know, I've got well, like I said, next Saturday I'm gonna 
not do a show, and then uh, got the next couple after that pretty well lined up. And of course, we want to work Melinda in there sometime uh, whenever she can do some more uh, photo V car stuff. I I saw somebody was saying. I was going to say something just added. in the chat again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we're patiently waiting. But anyway, I wanted to uh, kind of throw this out there. If there's anybody out there in the chat uh, that's watching and you are either building a Gatton CNC or have built a Gatton CNC, if you'd like to be featured on the show, I'd like to uh, have you on the show and, and – Talk about your build, and basically just because I want to see what uh, what comments you might have to see if I did anything wrong. But uh, so I don't know if there's anybody out there. I see Ox in the shop. Drew Oxford's out there in the chat. How you doing, Drew? Watching the dogs. Oh, come on, man. Oh, and by the way, Russ, just so you know, because I know you're a big Alabama fan. They're they're up seventeen to three. Who are they playing? Ooh. They're USC. Oh well, who gives them? <laughs> yeah, go Gators, right? <laughs> as long as they ain't playing the Gators, I could care less. Yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, seventeen to three right now. So roll tide. Ooh. Go Gators. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to be yeah, – now it's going to be 24 to 3. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll wrap this one up. We don't have – like I said, we don't really have a whole lot going on. I thought I'd just take some questions. Uh, let's see. Is there any other questions over there before we get out of here? Yeah, Tim Stegeman says, Dave – are you selling just the plans for the Gatton CNC or just the pre-cut kits? I'm selling just the kits, and of course you get a set of drawings with them, so you can, you know, all the all the stuff, you know, you, what you get with the kit, you know, and I've talked about this before, you get like 21 of the main parts, the other parts that, you know, you have to cut yourself are nothing but rectangle pieces, so you can cut them on a table saw or with a, circular saw with a guide or whatever. It doesn't take much for those. And by doing that, uh, one, I don't have to ship the really big parts. And two, it makes it where you can make it narrower or wider or longer. or You can make it whatever size you want. The, the set of plans that come with that uh, are designed around a table that's 48 by 48, which basically a half sheet of plywood. That's why I made it that way. But you can make it wider, longer, whatever you want. And all the pieces you get from me are still going to work because, you know, the things you make longer are the the, gant the long gantry pieces. So, Someone's asking how long does it take to get a kit? Uh, well, the <laughs> It only takes, I think I've still got on my website, you know, lead time like one to two weeks or something like that, but I actually had a guy that bought one the other day and I shipped it the same day. You know, I woke up that morning and looked on my email and, and he had bought one and cut it and packed it up and shipped it. That I'm going to the UPS store down the road here just about every day. So. You know, you can schedule them to pick up. To, to pick up the kits? Yep. Oh, you're talking about UPS? Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, I got I got a UPS store right down the street. So, if, you know, when I schedule them to, to pick up, if they don't, a lot of times they won't come until the afternoon. But if I take them over, like I had a guy that uh, right down the road in Macon, it's about an hour from here, 45 minutes or so. And if I take it, you know, even on a Thursday morning, he can get it the next day, so. But yeah, UPS stores right down there. Yeah, I've got a UPS store within uh, ten minutes, maybe, maybe fifteen from my house. So it's not worth for the um, them to pick it up because, just like you said, I can have it there quicker than they can pick it up. Yeah.
I would say more like seven to ten minutes from my house. Yeah, but we got one. Well, I don't know if you you remember where the Publix is right down the yeah. road from me. Yeah. There, yeah, there's one right next to the Publix in that little. Oh yeah, that's place. five minutes from you. Yeah, so it doesn't take any time to go down there. All right, I don't see any more questions. Just give me sawdust. By the way, you know, uh, <laughs> just to plug another channel. Uh, Lots of sawdust. <laughs> where's that mute button when you? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Drew Drew Oxford, he's over there in the chat. The ox in the shop. Uh, all you people in the chat, you need to hover, hover your mouse over the chat over over his ox in the shop and go check out his website. Uh, he just finished uh, getting his garage work CNC up and running. Is already posting some pictures of cool stuff on uh, on Facebook and also all around me and everywhere. All right, now watch out. <laughs> I like it flying. Didn't you just sing that a while ago at the end of your show? <laughs> all around my yeah, shop, to watch it. even in my beard and hair. I got it all there. Okay, you managed to sneak it in, didn't you? Yep. I'm surprised he didn't hit that mute button on you. <laughs> okay, uh, Drew's got a question for me here. We'll try to work it in real quick before. It says, question... Cutting plywood, faster or slower to get a cleaner cut? Well, that kind of depends on how fast or uh, how deep and stuff, you know, you're going. I cut those kits out there at uh, about, I, I think I cut them at like 80 inches a minute. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really need to cut them much faster, I guess. Yeah, well, well here's the thing. You get, there's a fine line between cutting too slow and too fast. Well, I'll tell you what, if you cut too slow, you have to look out for the burning of the wood because you're going too slow. So, And heating up your bit, which will make it dull. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I will say this, Drew. I tried something the other day. Um, you know, I mentioned on this show before I have three of those downcut spirals. With a they're a quarter inch diameter with a with a half inch shank, and that's what I'd been using. I'd like cut you know three or four blanks, swap one out, put a new one in or not a new one but a clean one in, and then I'd take that. I've showed that stuff you use to clean router bits and clean them up. Well, my router bits, you know, I've been cutting so many kits that they're just even when I get them cleaned up, they it doesn't take any time for them to just get that black <clears throat> crud on them. So I thought, well, I guess I'm going to have to break down and buy some more. So I ordered some more from Amazon, uh, a white side is what they are. And, uh, you know, they don't come. They're not eligible for the Amazon Prime, so I don't, I'm don't. i having to wait on them. They, have, they still haven't got here. But I did have a brand-new uh, Freud uh, quarter-inch single-flute straight-cutting bit. And I thought, well, what the heck, I'm going to stick that in there and see what that thing will do. And actually, it did a pretty decent job as far as, you know, because with the down spiral, I get it really clean on the top side of the plywood, which is good because that's where I'm putting my pockets and stuff. But on the bottom side, I'd always get a lot of fuzzies. Of course, it doesn't really matter because I'm, you know, sanding them anyway. But uh, I noticed when I used that, that single flute straight cutting bit, it it really put a pretty clean edge on both the top and the bottom. Does it look like this one? Uh, well, hold on. Let me lock it on you here. That one look, is that one blue? It's yeah. It's blue, but the sharp edges? No, mine doesn't, mine doesn't look like that. Mine's just... But I mean, uh, it, it, it's straight. You know, there's no... I don't yeah. think no that, one, I don't think that one's plunge, Richard. Uh, it actually has a uh, an end on it, if you look. But is it, it center cutting in the center? No, it, it's not. You, I could tell from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got yeah, that uh, gap hold in the center. It, yeah. Hold it, yeah, it's got a gap in the center. I'm gonna, Eight bucks on eBay. I figured I'd try it. 
Yeah, it looks. Uh, I, I'd go get that one, but I got it in the. I've still got it in the router there. But I will tell you this, Richard. Yeah. Uh, I have about three or four of those, not from uh, eBay, but my one sixteenth, one eighth, and one quarter are all exactly like there, and they're Freud. And I that's what cut this right here. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I like the... Uh, when I said a down mill, I was actually wrong earlier when I said that because I realized when I said the down mill because I was didn't realize what down mill to me means looks like what Richard had just holed up. But, uh, yeah, that was not a down mill. That was actually a 1 16th inch Freud bit that was just flat on the end, just exactly like he hold, held up. Oh, now it's 30 to 3, Russ. <laughs> well, the Gators are winning again. Oh, I'm sorry, 31 to 3. I mean, they're scoring so fast, I can't keep up. Oh, go. <laughs> oh, all right, what are we going to do here? Let's, uh, yeah, it's like 10, 22. We might as well uh, get out of here. Any, last call for questions. Anybody over in the chat, you got any questions before we sign out of here? So if anybody needs to get a garage work CNC, where do we get that at? Um, saying again. Well, the Gators are winning against Massachusetts Minutemen ten, ten to seven. What? What is that? A high school team? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Alabama's playing USC. Come on. Do you hear what I said? Just what? <laughs> I said the Gators are winning. Okay, we've done, we've done Grand Melinda off. She's getting ready to go. There she went. I didn't even get to say bye. She's done. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have heard a lot of people over there in the chat session that when I started singing, they were so like, hey, sing it again, Russ. I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, Carl, here, Carl Larson's got a question. He says, missed the show. What was the highlight? Uh, me singing. Uh, yeah, that's Probably about the highlight, I guess. No, the drawers and yeah, uh, how they were built with a garage work CNC. Yeah. Well, I know there was a lot of comments about Russ's pink drawers in the chat. They're not <laughs> pink. They're brown. <laughs> they have pink. pink drawers. They're not pink. They're brown. And if they are pink, it's like, is there a problem with it? Well, I, I know it can't be the lighting because you always have impeccable lighting. Well, no, <laughs> I don't have the light because I'm... If I turned it all on, you can't see anything. They're damn brown. <laughs> well, okay. Me and Richard say they're pink, but That's whatever. Right. You Next know. week, he'll have his red shirt and his pink drawers. Yeah. And I watched that build video, and that's pink. <laughs> <laughs> they're not pink. It's brown. Well, at least you at least you cut them with an orange machine, so you know safety yeah. ones. <laughs> and even if they, like I said, even if they were pink, what's the problem? I'm on my Fenman inside. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have, you know, I don't care. That. You know, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, Jim Bashir say he says pink. <laughs> I think I think the pinks have it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. If you go back and look at the the whole bottom table of the CNC on the video on when I built it is the same color as the drawers, and you tell me if that looks pink. Go okay. back to the video because everything that's well, you're just trying to get another view out of me. Well, that's <laughs> good. What the heck? Yeah. All right, I see. Uh, it looks like our uh, viewers are kind of dropping like flies now. So I oh, guess well, somebody said that I might just have made a col colorful metaphor. I guess they were watching my show about the colorful metaphors over there. So, no, I did not say a colorful metaphor. Dam is not a colorful metaphor. It's the f bomb that is the colorful metaphor. Hey, Dave, unlock my screen. 
Oh, gosh, I forgot I locked it on you. <laughs> I see in the notes that the, they left him locked on. So we've been looking at your ugly mug the whole time? Now you be nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess we're going to get out of here, guys. We're, we're down viewers here, and uh, we're well over. Like I said, we're back uh, about an hour and a half. We're about to our usual time we get off of here so I guess that's going to do it I appreciate uh, you guys hanging around with me tonight uh, appreciate all the viewers uh, that tuned in tonight and like I said just a reminder there won't be any CNC with Dave show next Saturday but since you're not going to have anything to do go watch the Let's Talk Shop with Russ show 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 8 p.m. Till, till what, midnight or something? Oh, we're going to party all night to the cows. <laughs> okay, yeah. Go check out uh, Go check out Russ Clarity. Let's talk shop with Russ. Simply Wooden Creations uh, next Saturday. And then uh, make sure you tune back in on the 17th uh, for both of our shows. Russ uh, at 8 and me at 9. So Anyway, that's going to do it. Everybody have a good uh, Labor Day weekend. And Remember to be thumbs safe. up. Be safe. Make sure you uh, hit a thumbs up on the way out. Show us some love, y'all. And we'll talk to y'all later. Y'all take care. Have a great weekend.